commonly asked questions tend to be on. I'll put some equations on the screen now, tricks that you can do to remember some of the fraction combos. Something they never ever teach you about in school, but then expect you to know in your UCAT. Hello and welcome back or welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking, I really appreciate it. For those of you that don't know, my name is Lottie and welcome to the shortest UCAT series you need to watch. This is episode four, quantitative reasoning. So similar to the last two videos of verbal reasoning and decision making, this video would be laid out as an introduction, a little bit about my experience, and then five tips to help you nail this section. To begin with, please don't get scared about this section being very mathsy if you don't have a math brain. Don't worry, I didn't have a math brain, still don't have a math brain. <laughs> But essentially this section is about critically evaluating in a numerical form. So try not to view it as maths because although you have to use maths to reach the answer, it's not the core of this section. It's more about your ability to work with numbers they've given you and try and reach a logical conclusion by doing a couple of sums. This section is made up of 36 questions and you have 24 minutes to do them in. So this works out at about 30 seconds per question or two and a half minutes per set. So there's nine sets with each set having four questions. According to Medic Portal, the average score is about 680, which is higher compared to the other subsets. And you can get nine questions wrong and still get 800. So hopefully that's quite reassuring. Although there are many different question types in the sense that you'll need to use different types of basic maths in order to reach the answer, the very commonly asked questions tend to be on ratio, interest, tax, percentage, and unit conversion. I'll put some equations on the screen now and some fraction conversions, which will be really helpful for you to take note of and remember them. And I have a couple of little memory games, kind of tricks that you can do to remember some of the fraction conversions. So a ninth is always 11% and an 11th is always 9%. An eighth is always 12% and a twelfth is always 8%. A seventh is always 14% and a fourteenth is always 7%. And a sixth is always 16% and a sixteenth is always 6%. Hopefully that all went in. If not, you might need to listen to that a couple of times and maybe write it down. Moving on to my experience with this section. I absolutely hated it. It was my least favorite section or maybe abstract reasoning was my least favorite section. They were, they were tied at the top. I hated them both so much. And in practice, it was not going well. I was I just couldn't get my head around the questions. However, on the day, it ended up being my best section, which was very, very strange. So I think I'll put that down to the UCAT questions being slightly easier than the Medify ones I did. And I think I just practiced it so much because I hated it so much that it ended up being my strongest area. Like verbal reasoning and decision making, I feel like this video is going to be much more compact as there isn't loads and loads to say about quantitative reasoning. So we can now move on to five tips that will help you out with this section. Beginning with tip number one, make sure when you look at the question and then you go to look at the answers to rule out any of the really obviously incorrect answers. Not only will this save you so much time, but it'll probably leave you with a couple of answers that are quite closely linked. And this is where tip number two comes in. Look out for the traps. So quite often traps can come in the forms of dates or additional numbers like time or family members. And most of the time it seems like unnecessary information but the chances are some of it will actually be useful, especially if you have tens and thousands, so like the same stem number and then different numbers of zeros on the end, make sure to look out for that because it could be a trap and that could help you eliminate the answers further. Tip number three, so this one can be quite helpful if you're running low on time. The last set is known to be easier than all the other sets, so if you're very low on time, guess flag and move on from the set that you're on, go to the last set and try and get all the answers right on that one. Now this is just again word of mouth but you never know it could be true and it could save you in your exam tip number four this also applies to if you're running low on time have a look at the question and if you can tell from the get-go that the question is going to require lots of calculations even if you know for sure that you could get it right if you're very low on time guess flag and move on and come back to it later if, however, you know that you're getting loads of questions wrong and you just feel like you're very, very confused and overwhelmed, spend a bit of time on the questions that have lots of calculations if you know 100% you're going to get that question right. If it's too much of a risk, skip it. Lastly, tip number five, I've saved the best till last. 
tax questions, something they never ever teach you about in school but then expect you to know in your UCAT. So here I am to teach you about tax questions in quantitative reasoning. This is something that very, very often trips students up and so it's worth listening to this just to get an idea of how they expect you to answer the tax questions. So imagine you're given a little table and it splits up someone's salary into zero to 10,000 pounds, 10,000 to 20,000, etc. And on each block of money, you're charged a certain tax. So let's say from zero to 10,000 pounds, you're charged 10% of tax. And we have somebody who has a salary of 15,000 pounds a month. So in order to work out the tax that they would be charged on that, you take the first block of money, which is the 10,000 pounds, because they've got more than 10,000. So you take the 10,000 and you charge 10% on that. Then the remaining 5,000 pounds is charged into the next bracket. So the next bracket up, let's say, 10 to 20,000 pounds is charged 15%. So then that 5,000 pounds will be charged 15% and the first 10,000 is charged 10%. So it's never charged in one chunk. You take each block of money at a time and charge different amount of taxes on it. I really hope that made sense because I know it can be quite confusing. So drop a comment below if you have any questions on that and need any more support. Thank you so so much for watching this video. Please do stick around for the next couple of videos of this series and share with anyone who you think may find it helpful and as always please do subscribe and have a lovely day. Mm -hmm.